Well, good evening or good morning or good afternoon, wherever you're watching us from. We certainly give God praise for the teaching of his word. And I want to thank those of you who are here. We have some people that are here in person uh, as we seek to um, open back up. Our church has been open, but have in-person Bible study. We're so grateful for those of you who share God's teachings with your family and your friends. And I want to say this to those of you who are watching this video, wherever you're watching this video from, and no matter what time it is, I want to say to you now more than ever, and even those of you who are here in person, now more than ever, we have to value God's word. These are difficult times that we're living in right now, very controversial times right now. And I want to encourage you, uh, as many as you do, share this word with someone. Share God's word with someone. Call them, share this video with someone. I want to talk today, um, just for the next few weeks, about appreciating the word of God, appreciating the word of God. And I think um, the reason why I sense that the Lord has really placed this on my heart to talk about appreciating God's word is because Jesus said something in John uh, 635. He said, if we take God's word and we eat it, we'll never hunger and we'll never thirst again. He said, I am the bread of life. And he said, if we take God's word and we eat it and we thirst, that's not on the outline, but that scripture will come up. He says, we will never hunger or thirst again. And so I thought about this um, during my 26 years of pastoring on my appreciation morning, that's the verse that I read to you that God placed on my heart. In order to stay spiritually in shape, John 6, 35, in order to have spiritual discipline, we have to take God's word and we have to, Brother Walker, hunger for it. And he said, and if we eat it, he said, listen, we'll never hunger. And he said, we will never thirst again. So I want to encourage you to eat the spiritual food from the word of God. In John 4, Jesus said, man doesn't live. This is not on the outline for today, but this is just sentiments of my heart. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceeds or comes out of the mouth of the Lord. And Brother Walker, when we think about being um, spiritually fit, spiritually in shape, I would, have to, I would have to use the analogy of, uh, Jesus was also using this metaphor of physical food. All of us, what? We, we eat physical food. How many of y'all already ate breakfast? How many of y'all can't wait to get out of here and eat lunch? How many of y'all are already thinking about dinner? I know Brother Keith Walker, he liked to eat. He always talking about, oh boy, oh boy. I'm going to go get me a, 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 what's that place you get the corned beef sandwiches at? Sapiro's. He loves Sapiro sandwiches. And the reason why we eat is to do what? To survive. Yeah, we eat for nourishment. But listen to this. We eat to survive, but don't we eat to stay alive? We eat to survive and we eat to stay alive. And all I'm saying to you is that you got to eat the word of God to survive, to stay alive. How many of y'all feel a little, a little weak right now? And how many of you know sometimes, like me, I'll get to running and I start feeling a certain way. And then all of a sudden, Sister John said, I think about it, I said, I haven't ate anything today. Well, the last time I ate was early yesterday. Now, watch this. Watch this. All of a sudden, when you start feeling a little weak, your temperament change, right? Oh, yeah. How many of y'all, when you're hungry, get irritable? 
I don't know about sleepy, but I know I get irritable. So here's what I'm saying. You have to appreciate the word of God. And the only way you find strength in the word of God is to eat his word. Jesus said we can't live by what? Bread alone. But every word that proceeds out of what? The mouth of God. Now, here's what I want to say to you. If you haven't ate spiritually, you may be feeling a little weak. Here's the, here's the illustration now. How many of you are a little irritable right now spiritually? Maybe a little spiritually ticked. How many things are getting on your nerve right now and you're not demonstrating the patience? It could be. I see some hands going up, but, I, but those of you who are watching me, how many of you are critical right now instead of praying? It could be that you ain't ate. And I'm not talking about steak, baked potato, and broccoli. I'm talking about the word of God. So today I want to talk about just appreciating, Brother Walker, the word of God. Number one, listen, you and I must appreciate the virtues of the word of God. And this is important for, for those of you, it's up on the screen, if you want to take a picture, you writing it down, um, those of you who um, understand the word virtue, what that word virtue means is the truthfulness of something. And, and we ought to appreciate the truthfulness of the word of God. Notice what it says. If you don't understand the great value of scripture, you won't have any desire to learn it, to learn it. The Bible is a timeless book forever settled in heaven. Listen to what he says in Psalms 119 verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is what? Settled in heaven. It isn't the book of the month or even the book of the year. It's the book of of what? Ages. And so you got to appreciate the Bible as a timeless book. Now, let me tell y'all why I talk about appreciating the Bible as a timeless book. Because right now, Brother Walker, we're living in a culture that marginalized the word of God. In other words, the word marginalized means they try to say that the Bible is inadequate. Yeah, it doesn't, it's antiquated. Others say, listen, that is outdated. And what you and I have to do when we talk about the Bible being a timeless book, we got to understand, listen, the, that the Bible, the Bible says, is forever what settled in heaven. Meaning, here's what I want y'all to understand. Meaning that the precepts that God has laid out in his word, this is why you can't marginalize it. Listen, they are non-negotiable. They're non-negotiable. And, and, and I'll tell you how I know that they're non-negotiable. And Ryan, this ain't on the outline, but we put this up when we're teaching it tonight. Psalms 119 verse 4 says, you have commended us. Note this. Not asked us, but commended us, 19 and 4, to keep your precepts diligently. G listen, listen. God has commended us to do that. And this book 
is a timeless book. And we ought to appreciate the virtue of the word of God. That is timeless. And, and listen to me, y'all. It never goes out of style. Number two, you must appreciate that the Bible is a truthful book. It's a timeless book. It doesn't go out of style. It speaks to every situation. But it's a truthful book. Um, Psalms 119 verse 60 says what? Thy word is true. From the beginning, and every one of the righteous judgments endured forever. God's word is true. And God's word is true from the what? From the beginning. And you and I got to understand that I don't care what comes in our lives. We have to appreciate the truthfulness of God's holy word and, and and let me say this to you some people say well the bible listen to me closely some people say well the bible uh was wrote by man let me show you how true it is second timothy three sixteen says what all scriptures is given by what inspiration of god and it's what profitable for what doctrine for reproof, for correction, for what? Instructions. You ought, to, you, you ought to appreciate the word of God because for doctrine, reproof, correction, for instructions and what? Righteousness dealing with the way that you ought to live. And I know, Sister Payne, most people today, they don't appreciate the truthfulness that the Bible is, listen to this, the inerrant word of God. Meaning that the, even though man wrote it, it was inspired. Meaning that they wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. God inspired it and it's God's breed. So brother, brother Walker, when I talk about appreciating, I hope y'all got your Bibles. When I talk about appreciating the word of God, you got to appreciate the word of God because it's God inspired. Now, let me, let me say something to you today that uh, when you really, really, really think about the word of God, it, it's not too popular. We're fighting, and look at, it, look at it right now. Look at how our government oversteps what God has said in his word to make it fit what they want to do. But y'all got to remember that this is, remember, it's a timeless book. It's been settled in heaven. And I don't care what changes, Brother Moncrief, God's word doesn't change. God's God word doesn't change. Now, now, the issue is, Christians, do you change? i never seen so many Christians who dumb the truth of God's word down to, to really kind of fit their own living. Let me say it another way. The Bible is a truthful book. The entirety of your word is true. That's Psalms 119 verse 169. Some experts today think they ought to re-examine the Bible, but we ought to re-examine them. So that verse should be Psalms uh, 119, verse 169. I'm sorry, instead of Psalms 119, one, verse 160. Listen, we ought to re-examine them. But that 160 is good because it talks about the inerrancy of God's word. But those who want to re-examine God's word, we really need to think about re-examining them. Let me say one more thing about God's word being true. Some attack the Bible. Others substitute their experiences for the Bible. And still, others think they need to prop it up with psychology and philosophy. But the Bible is true. It is the inspired word of God. Now, why do I say that? Because some Christians, the point I was just making, they get learned. And Sister Johnson, when they get learned, if you don't watch it, They'll go away from, I, t I, t I say this all the time to your young grandson who's studying to be a doctor, and I appreciate his love for the Bible. 
Because if nothing else, practicing medicine ought to show you how much you need God. It, it ought to mesmerize you. But let me say this about some Christians. Some Christians who go to college, who go to school, they started adding psychology and philosophy to the word of God. I was talking to one of them just the other day. And we were talking about um, this whole issue of a woman's right to choose. You know what I just said? I said, I'm not a politician. I err on the side of the Bible. And if, and if God put that child in your womb, regardless of whether it was your promiscuous behavior, regardless of whether it was rape or incest, because some people say, well, if somebody's raped, they ought to not have it. And I said, I said, I don't want to sound like I'm minimizing it. I said, but a lot of us as black people wouldn't be here when they were raped in slavery. If they would have aborted us. And some people say, well, you don't know the pain that it caused. I don't. But I know the privilege that God will give you if you carry that baby and have it. And so I'm not, you know, I was talking to them. I said, I'm not trying to minimize. I'm just solidifying that I have to add and stick with what the Bible says. And guess what? If God gives life, I think, is that what Job said? The Lord, what? Gives. And it's the Lord's job to take away. And um, I know that, and I got to move on, and I'm on this point that it's a truthful book. And by it being true, listen to me, y'all. We can't choose what we want to adhere to and what we don't want to adhere to. Now, I do say, and I will say this. If it comes down to a woman's life being threatened and she's about to die between her and her baby, then you got to let God do what he does. You don't want to lose your life. You follow what I'm saying? And so if you have to take a baby because the lady's getting ready to die, I understand that. And I don't minimize that. I see, I see the support in that. But with all of, I was I was in Florida and I heard a lady say this, and God is my witness three weeks ago. Sister, Sister Turner, she said, I've had eight abortions. Now the rest of it I'm gonna leave alone, but it's all up under this point that the Bible is a timeless book and a truthful book. Hear me clearly. And for those who may be watching, I don't want you to get a little mad. I don't want you to get mad, but if you get mad. God doesn't change because you want to change. God doesn't dumb his word down to fit your behavior or your circumstance. Now, I love you in the Lord by saying that. But at the same time, this book is a truthful book. This book is a timeless book. And we have to line our lives up. Or what the Bible says. Now, I'll say this last point about this. I would much rather see Christians and I would much rather see people change their hearts than just always harboring on changing laws. Because changing laws really don't stop anything. It, it becomes the change of what? Heart. The change of heart. And so, because the Bible is a timeless book, Brother Moncrie, and because the Bible is a truthful book, God expects you and I to live by it. Well, there's a next movement is not only should we appreciate the virtue, that virtue means the truthfulness of God's word. And so everything I just said, y'all, even about this whole issue of Roe v. Wade and abortion issue, hey, y'all, you got to talk about it because it's in the book. And the Bible is what? Timeless. And the Bible is truthful. And God does not change. You have to line your life up with his word. The second thing is, uh, once you appreciate the virtue of the word of God, you must assimilate the vitality of the word of God. That word vitality means alive. The Bible is living and it is powerful. Just in case you thought that the Bible was dead, antiquated, outdated, 
the Bible, everybody say living. And everybody say alive. The Bible is living and the Bible is a lie. How do I know? Because Hebrews 4 and 12 says what? That the word of God is what? Quick? What? Powerful? What else? And sharper than what? Any two-edged sword. What? Piercing even to the what? Dividing of the sunder or the soul in the spirit. In the what? Joints in the mouth. It's alive, y'all. It's living. And is a what? A discerner of what? Thoughts and what? The intent of the heart. Let me tell y'all something. No one else or nobody else. Now, Jesus can do it because he's omniscient. But nothing else can discern your thoughts and the intent of your heart outside of the word of God. So when I talk about appreciating the vitality of the word of God, you have to appreciate that the word of God is alive. And guess what? You don't have to dress it up for anyone. All you need to do is what? Line up under it. And then do what? Speak it. You know, uh, Jesus said, the words that I speak to you are what? Spirit. And they are life. That's John 6, 33. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are what? Spirit. And they are life. That's not on your outline. You want to write it down. It says, he says, they are spirit and they are life. Now, here's the thing that you have to understand when you look at this Bible being a timeless book, being a uh, truthful book. It, it, it then, uh, it's a book that you have to assimilate into your own life. And let me tell you why it's so important to assimilate this Bible into your own life. If you don't assimilate this book into your own life, guess what? You'll never live by it. That word assimilate means take it in. Here at the church, we have assimilations classes so people can learn about the church. And and what God expects us to do with God's word is to take it in. How many of y'all have taken, how many of y'all say, let's go take in a good movie? Or we're going to go take in a good dinner. When was the last time you took in the word of God? And I'm going to tell you why this is so important. You have to take in the word of God. Because if you don't take in the word of God, guess what? You're going to miss your best life. Let me say that again. If you don't take it in, you're going to miss your best life. Jot this down. So I already said the Bible is a timeless book. I said the Bible is a what? Truthful book. And let me tell you how you're going to miss your best life. Because the Bible is a treasure book. It's a treasure book. In the Bible, it's a treasure book. Notice what it says. In Psalms 119, verse number 72, it says, The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. That's not on the outline, but it'll come up. It's a treasured book. And here's what I do know. People want to be wealthy. But guess what, y'all? The Bible is better than piles of jewelry. It's better than stocks and bonds. It's better than real estate. When I think about the Bible being a treasured book, listen to me. It'll make you rich and it doesn't depend on stuff. Now, if I had an audience that I was preaching to. Yeah, somebody's clapping. Y'all can say amen and clap. That's okay. They ain't got to see you. Just say amen so they can hear you. Give a clap so they can hear you. We ain't going to put no cameras on you. 
But, there, but there's some people out here, that, for those of you who are watching me. And, and, and here's, what, here's what I want to say to all of the young people who want to get ahead and want to be somebody and, and think that they live by making that bread. No, you live by getting in this book. How many of y'all know that you can be rich and don't even spend what you had because you don't know you have? It's kind of like that boy who told his mother to send, send him some money because he was in need. And he said, Mom, I really, really need you to send me some money. And his mother would ask him every day. He talked to him and said, how you read your Bible today? Some of y'all have heard that story. He said, Mama, that, that ain't what I'm calling you for. I told you that I am in need. Mom say, son, how you read your Bible today? And I guess after talking to his mother about five times, he got indignant and ticked, and he was in college, and he went home. And Mama said to him, have you read your Bible? He kept saying, yeah, Mama. But what, the, what does that have to do with it? He said, I've been in need for over seven weeks, and the only thing you keep asking me about is reading my Bible. And when he got home, Mom said, have you read your Bible today? He said, I didn't come home for that. Then his mom said, open your Bible. That was all he needed, but when he opened it up, mama had put all the money in an envelope in the Bible. Yeah, clap can go right there. A lot of us are in need. Listen, we're in need psychologically, we're in need emotionally, we're in need spiritually, but guess what? We are not reading the treasure from this book. Brother my grief. It's a, it's a timeless book. It's a truthful book. And it is a trusted book. Now, how do we trust this book? We trust this book by appropriating the value of the word of God. In other words, we have to take the word of God. And we have to appropriate it. We have to apply it to our everyday life. And most people don't apply this book to their everyday life. Let me tell you what happens when you appropriate this book and apply it to, to your everyday life. The first thing you have to do when, when you start appropriating this book and applying it to your everyday life, guess what happens? It begins to clean you up. Psalms 119, verse 11. Here's what it says. Thy word have I what? Hid in my heart that I what? Might not sin against thee. How many of y'all are dealing with some sin problems? <laughs> How many of you got to can't help us to some sin in your life? And it don't have to be, it don't have to be, it could be anything. Yeah, it could be gossip. It could be envy. It's, it's more sins than abortion and homosexuality. You need to understand that. Some of y'all got some sins of just being, being immoral and not being right. But let me say this. When you appropriate it, Sister Payne, not you, not that you got these sins, but, but when you appropriate it, it keeps you from the sin. Thy word have I hid. In my heart. 
I want to talk to those of you who are watching me and some of you young people who may be watching me in your car or laying in your bed or eating, eating your sandwich or whatever you're doing. I really appreciate you watching, but I want to say to you right now that let me tell you something. If you're struggling with something you can't stop, just ask God to let you remember this one verse. And try to just take this one verse and apply it to your life. I hear some of y'all thinking, I hear some of y'all thinking, I hear some of y'all thinking, saying, I really, really can't, I really can't do this. Yes, you can. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. How do I know you can do it? Because Psalms 119 verse 16 says, I delight, verse 16, I delight, it should have been verse, I delight myself in thy statues, and I will not forget thy word listen this verse says if you take pleasure in God's statues it'll help you to deal with whatever it is you're dealing with in your life so when you get ready to go to sin it means the word of God is already there let me give you a last one and I promise I'm done when you think about this word and when you think about what the word of God will, will do for you, Psalms 119 verse 67 says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now, I keep your word. That's not on the paper, but, but, but write that down. This psalmist says, Lord, before you chastise me, I drifted away from you. But guess what he's saying? He says, but now I'm doing what? I'm learning. It's on your paper. I'm learning how to do what? Keep your word. And some of you say, well, I can't help it. I can't stop. Let me tell you what the word of God will do. The word of God will keep you from dipping and dabbing and then dabbing to get out of the dip. That's what he's saying. You know why? He said because before God let trouble come, I wasn't obeying God's word. I can't claim that statement. That was one of the boot camp guy's statements. But, but what he was saying, Brother Moore, he said before I got in trouble... I was not obeying God's word. How many of y'all know trouble have a way of refining you and bringing you back to what you should obey? I think I need to close it right here. I'm not done, but since we're recording, I'm going to stop it right here. And I want to give you two things to help you. I know I could hear somebody saying, um, somebody is saying right now, I could hear you. I can hear you right now saying, well, I don't know how to keep God's word. And, and I can't learn God's word. Uh, on the page, Ryan Psalms 119, verse 12, the first thing you got to do if you want to keep God's word, learn God's word, value God's word, you got to remember Psalms 119 and 12. It says, blessed are thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. If, if you want to appreciate the virtue of the word of God, if you want to assimilate the vitality of the word of God, if you want to appropriate the value of the word of God, would you pray Psalms 119 and 12, blessed are thou, O Lord, and then ask God to do what? Teach me thy statues. That word statue means what? Word. Ask him to teach you his word. And then watch this. After you pray that, then you find one verse. I'm not even telling you to read a chapter. One verse. And do this. Psalms 119 verse 15. I will meditate in thy precepts. And have respect unto thy ways. Ask God to let you meditate on that one verse. Now I say all of that and I'm done to say all of this at the end. Whoever wrote this Psalms. We don't know who wrote it. But whoever wrote it was going through some type of trouble. We don't know what type of trouble he was going through, but I know he was going through trouble. 
Because when you read verse 42, it says, so shall I have an answer for him who reapproached me. That means somebody was after him. Verse 51, I know he was going through trouble because he said, the proud have me in great derision. He said, but yet I do not turn aside from your law. Some people want to give it to David, others, Ezra. I don't know who it was, but he was going through something. And what he was trying to teach us, Sister Rhoda, that we can handle the chilly winds of life, the ebbs and flow of life, by grabbing a hold of this word. It's so much more in here. I'll pick it up for the next two weeks. But you want to grab a hold to it unless you appreciate its value. You won't grab a hold of it unless you know that it's alive and you appreciate its vitality. And, and you won't grab a hold to it unless you learn how to appropriate its value. So those of you who are watching me, heads bowed and eyes closed, just ask God, God right now, wherever you are, Lord, help me to appreciate the value of the word of God. I know Pastor Webster said some tough stuff to challenge me, but, but right now, he opened up talking about, I can't live by bread alone. And I'm trying to live by bread. I'm trying to live off my career, and I'm trying to live off my degree. But today, I found out what's missing. What's missing is your word. Just ask God to help you to rededicate yourself to the word. And if you are a Christian, listen. Ask God to not to let you marginalize the word of God. And all of this coffee and steak and donuts you eating, start using the word. If you've never accepted Jesus, you can ask Jesus right where you are, wherever you may be watching us at this time. Father, come into my heart and save me. And if you text 9400 change today, we will get back with you. And if you give your life to Jesus Christ, some of you we may not see until we go to heaven. But thank you for tuning in. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. And we ask, oh dear God, that you will continuously bless those who watch it in these next few weeks as we open your word and study it. Help us, oh God, to remember it's alive. It's the bread of life. And if we eat it, we don't have to hunger. If we drink it, we don't have to thirst. In Jesus' name.